The public health regulations say that your body functions best if you operate between 68 and 72 degrees. So we'll guarantee you the 72 degrees and we'll allow you to switch your thermostat lower than that if you wish. You can turn your thermostat up to 90, but you only get 72. Because we meet the public regulations and that, that is a proven fact of the way it works. And that saves enormous amounts of electricity and many other things. In one of our buildings, we put in what's called a valence system, which means there's no moving parts to the cooling. It just goes through piping and moves through like a curtain over the window. And the air, by just natural convection, flows around. And if it's cooling in the summertime, we'll only cool you to 74 degrees. Because when you're sitting down and relaxing, your heart rate's settled, you find that very moderate and very beautiful temperature to be at. So once we have the cooling running, if you went and opened that window, it shuts the valve on the cooling and, shut and turns the cooling off. So the cooling water is going through, but if you open the window to get air, right, we'd love for you to have the natural air, which then will immediately turn off the water that's running through the piping. So that's the balancing act that we're doing with buildings, etc. It's all psychological, of course. Thermostats are psychological. There's people that have complained in buildings for years, you know, oh, I'm freezing in here. And you can bring a thermostat in, put it on the wall, and put no wires to it or anything, but as long as they can go over and turn it up and down, everybody feels great, right? I'm, I'm in control of my own world. We're all control freaks. Getting back, getting back to the water situation, uh, and this was just a simple suggestion from a student, because that's where all the great ideas come from, and I'm, I'm delighted that we have some, uh, a young entourage here today. I think it's Phillips Academy, is it? So we're delighted to see you. Thanks for coming. And, uh, Somebody mentioned to me about the showerhead systems that we had in our apartments. And we went and, and replaced 2,600 showerheads and 6,000 aerators. Now, these are the little things that screw onto your tap. We call them taps, faucets, I believe you call them down here. So you screw it onto your faucet, it's, you, it's tamper free, you can't take it off. It'll spin around. All right? And we estimated the potential savings, and I'm now glad to say that we've proven the savings are over 25%. And I'll tell you later in. Later in the, uh, we spent over $1.2 million in water last year just in our division. And we're just a small part of Harvard University. So that's a lot, of, a lot of money we could be using to reinvest in better technology, et cetera. And that's where it all starts. Lighting upgrades, we, we did all kinds of enhancements with policies, uh, reducing the uh, metric tons of carbon dioxide, changed our AC policy. We will not, last year in February, I walked around to some of our buildings, I believe it was February 11th. And on February 11th last year, in 22% of the windows in our building, if you could put in the air conditioner, if it, you know, if it was the older type buildings, it wasn't a whole portfolio, but of the buildings you could put a, that had windows that you could put an AC in, 22% of the windows had, a, had an AC left in them all winter long. And you'll drive through the cities and you'll see it, that's just like leaving the window open all winter. Then if they're overheated, they turn on the air conditioning. You know, it's, 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 it's really, it's really just so impractical, so simple. But, but you know, we, we're there every day and we don't really see it until somebody reminds us. In regard to recycling, it speaks for itself. If you don't start by recycling, that's at the very elemental thing. If it doesn't start with recycling, you, 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 you don't build the steam to go on to other things. You don't build up that head of steam and get people excited. If you're in a building where it's not recycled, they're not recycling their paper, et cetera, or they're not making an effort, you just, and then if you make some other offer to do something about being green, the first thing they'll say, well, sure heavens, you don't even have a recycling program. So that's, 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 that's a, an elemental move right from the start. We're doing some pilot projects, and I'll swing through them quickly. This is, this is a little disk, this is a little mini computer that sits on some, we're doing this at five houses at Harvard University, where it's, it's a uh, signal taken from the meter by wireless, you strap it around your meter, you can buy it for $49, people, people have them in their homes, and it, it monitors the power in your house and also tells you the dollars that you're burning per kilowatt hour and shows the meter spinning and then when you turn on everything you'll see it spinning like this you say and you know your money is going out of your wallet because eventually eventually with the cost of utilities as they're going you will not be able to afford what they put forward so let, let's prepare ourselves for it now and show them that we can cut back this excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. 
To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.